Hello everybody and welcome. Today we're gonna make one of my favorite things to eat for breakfast, granola. Making your own granola at home is a great alternative to buying store-bought granola, plus it is cheaper. Now this particular granola, Henry's granola, is something that we've been giving away for years in gift exchanges. And if you've ever received a jar from us, you know that our dog Henry always graces the cover of the jar, thus Henry's granola. It has even inspired an entire line of kitchen attire. Ta-da! What do you think? Big thanks to the Greenhearts who gifted us these for our wedding present. Thank you guys so much. Now, all of this is to say that this granola is a huge hit and I can't wait to get started. So let's just dive right in. Okay, so first let's go through all the ingredients that we have today. First, we have three and a half cups of rolled oats, half a cup of sliced almonds, half a cup of pumpkin seeds, half a cup of sunflower seeds. On the seeds and the nuts, you're free to mix this up. You do want one and a half cup of total volume. You also want to get unsalted. For spice, we have half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon and half a teaspoon of ground cardamom. We have three quarters a teaspoon of fine sea salt, half a cup of grade A maple syrup, and half a cup of coconut oil. Like with all cooking, the best ingredients are going to yield the best results. So be sure that you're getting good overall ingredients, especially with the oil and the maple syrup. So let's go ahead and set everything off to the side here. And while I'm doing this, you can go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And then grab a large mixing bowl and go ahead and dump all of your dry ingredients into it with the oats, the almonds, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds. I'm also at this stage gonna go ahead and add my spice of the cardamom and the cinnamon. Cardamom, it's a fun, fun thing to say. Easy to, uh, easy to get you tricked up on. <sighs> go ahead and give this a little mix. Add about half of your salt at this point. Whoa. Give this a good mix. And then now add your wet ingredients of your oil and your maple syrup. Be sure to get it all out of there. Now this is the part that you really want to mix together. You wanna to make sure that everything is getting evenly coated. And this can take some time. While you're doing this, you can think about all the different things that you can do with granola. Like you can make a, a smoothie bowl and put it on top. You can put it on top of yogurt. Uh, or my personal favorite, you can kind of treat it as a morning cereal. My mother-in-law loves to eat it out of the jar. But as with most food that you cook for yourself, you know what you're putting into it. And one of the greatest things about this granola recipe is that we're really controlling also the sugar content of the granola. So as you can see, everything is pretty evenly distributed. There's no clumped spices anywhere. And that's really the consistency that we're looking for. Uh, remember, we still have some salt that we need to add to this. So why don't we go ahead and add just a little bit more. Mix it again. And then add the remainder. And mix this well. Okay, we're gonna set this to the side. I have a preheated oven at 350 degrees. I also have a 17 by 13, roughly, cookie sheet here that I've lined with aluminum foil. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have it lined. It's gonna make it, getting it off the pan a lot easier. And then the trick here is just to kind of sculpt it. You wanna spread it out pretty evenly. So we're going for a very even consistency all throughout the pan. And once you kind of get it to a place that you feel comfortable with it, where it feels like it is pretty even, when you're scraping it around, nothing's really moving around a whole bunch. I like to, this is an optional step, but I like to add just a little bit of texture to it, kind of going back and forth, kind of increasing the surface area that the heat can wrap itself around the granola and you can kind of get that caramelization, which is what is going to taste oh so good. Okay, so we're ready to go into the oven, 350 degrees. Plop it on into the center. Now we're gonna bake this for about 20 to 30 minutes. And I know what you're probably thinking, Paul, this is a cooking show. You're supposed to give me accurate times. 
And the real reason is that every oven is different. We're gonna check back in 20 minutes to see the progress. Yours might be different from mine, so I'll show you what to look for. Okay, see you then. Okay, everybody, so this is about 20 minutes in and we're just not quite there yet. Still a little pale, so we're gonna keep it going for maybe another five to 10 minutes. Keep checking on it. Oh, good 30. For me, it was actually more like 35 minutes later and we're done. As you can see, we have a nice good color to it. It's been nice and toasted, a little caramelization. We haven't burnt anything. It smells amazing in here. That's a great byproduct about making this granola. Your house is gonna smell fantastic. Easiest thing to do here is just to let it cool. You're gonna to wanna to let it cool all the way to about room temperature. It may take about 30 to 45 minutes. And then at that point, it is going to firm up and get hard. And because of this aluminum foil, you can just lift it up and start breaking it. And it looks amazing. So we're gonna let this cool all the way down before we store it. Put it in an airtight container, it'll last you a little while, and then just have it any other way you would normally have granola. There's lots of recipes out there. You could also just eat it straight, or do my favorite way. Well, it's a beautiful spring morning here, and I'm here with my uh, morning bowl of granola. Not a better way to really enjoy a morning quite like this. The way I like to have it is the granola sliced banana, yogurt, and a little bit of peanut butter topped off with some almond milk or a milk beverage of your choice. This is really my favorite way to start off the day, and I really hope that you guys try it. Thank you so much for watching. Keep being creative in the kitchen, and until next time.